welcome back to more Space Engineers Programming with your host, Piloter42. How are you doing today? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, tell me more. Oh, that's boring. You're boring. <laughs> welcome back to more Space Engineers Programming with your host, Pilot Error 42 uh, Today, we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit about delays. Um, I've gotten a few questions in the past, and this is actually something that I was very interested in a long time ago. Well, when this first came out, a month or so ago, um, as to how do I do something in a little bit. Um, you know that we already have uh, timer blocks in the game, but there's got to be something more than that, right? There's got to be some other way to do delays through programming. Well, mm, there aren't exactly. Um, it would be nice to have a little uh, tidy little wait command where you give it a certain number of milliseconds or game ticks or something like that and then it would wait and then resume with the rest of your code. Um, but there isn't. However, that doesn't mean that it's impossible to add in some sort of delay. So here I'm going to do going to be talking about um, two these two those are for later these two um, two different ways to have a program run after a certain period of time um, a a common way to set up your program programmable block is to have a timer that every usually every one second or two or five or however long you want every few seconds it runs the program as well as starts itself um, and that's a good way to get your script running every second or, w or with whatever granularity you want it to um, but what if you want that time to change what if you want to call a certain piece of code after three seconds. Well, here is a way to do it. Um, the first is very basic. That's why I called it basic delay. Um, however, it does require um, more than one programmable block and it doesn't actually actually require more than one timer block um, but in this case we are going to use a second timer block. So what this script is going to do is flash this light on. Uh, it's going to wait a, a random amount of seconds and then it will flash it off and it will remain off for a random amount of seconds and then it'll turn back on, etc, etc. Um, so in each of these blocks we have an almost identical piece of code. Um, in here we have where we grab the light, this is what it's named, and then we turn it on. And then we grab the, t the timer block, the correct block, I've named these blocks, um, we're in basic delay block 1, and it has a corresponding timer block of uh, basic display, basic delay timer block 1, whose action is to call basic delay block one's programming. And there's another one for two. So in this one, we grab the block two, we start up our random number generator, we figure out a good delay. Um, so this will be anywhere from half a second to uh, five seconds. As you can see, it, it's a random integer between 5 and 50, and that divides it by 10, so that 5 becomes 0.5, that 50 becomes 5. Um, this F is to explicitly say that this 10 is not a double, it is a float, so that it will be float, because um, when we set the timer blocks trigger delay, that's however long it waits, <clears throat> we need a, a float, so you set value float. And then we make sure that it's stopped. This is unneeded, but I was, it's not 
There's nothing wrong with having it in there, even though it is unneeded. And then it starts it. So then after a random amount of time, this thing will be blue, and then it'll run, which will then trigger this guy. And this guy turns the light off. And then it grabs the other timer block, does the same sort of random number generation, changes the delay on the block to that, and then starts it. So, what does this look like? Looks like this. On. That one's running. Off. That one's running. On. Off. Um, and it's a random everything. Oh, uh, sorry. Random delay. Um, and that is just an example of um, coming in here, uh, doing some work, and then triggering whatever you want to trigger, um, whenever you want to trigger it. Um, there is, there is uh, at least one strength to doing it this way, and that's that your different features, you're going to be calling them with a, with a timer block, and they're probably going to be a, a different programmable block. Um, theoretically, you could also have a another timer block that calls the same program after a certain number of seconds. Um, but this, this way your different features are going to be in different programmable blocks which will make them simpler and each individual script smaller. However, that does mean you're going to have more blocks. Um, there is more setup to do. It's not just one timer and one programmable block. And you can't keep any variables from uh, one programmable block to another programmable block. They all have their separate namespace. Or there's another term for it, which I'm blanking on. Um, so, what if we do want to keep the same variables? Well, and I'm going to stop this guy, sorry. You stop that. That's what I have over here. So this is a, a simpler setup with a, a lo more complex script. Um, it's still not too complex, that's why it's only advanced and not very advanced. Um, as you can see, it's a bit longer. So in this one, we are going to uh, turn, a, turn this light on after a random amount of time, and then turn it off after a random amount of time, just like before. In here, we have a variable toggle. It's initially instantiated to true. Um, this only gets put into effect when you when it actually gets recompiled or when you're loading from a save. Um, otherwise it'll keep whatever very whatever value it was before. Um, same thing goes with this guy right here which is the random number generator because we don't need a new random number generator every single time. Again with a script this length that's not going to matter but if you're doing more complex stuff, um, if, you, if you don't need new instance of something, keep the old one around. So we have our light and our timer block. And right off the bat, we're going to call our own init function. And all that does is check to see, do we have the light, the global light value uh, set? If not, if it's null, then we'll grab it from the, the grid. Um, same thing goes with the timer block. We'll grab it from the grid. Uh, and then here we have our switch on toggle. So if it's true, then we're in state number one. If it's false, we're in state number two. Um, I'll get to this what this does in a minute. And then we will switch states by making our toggle equal the opposite of itself. And then we are starting the timer block. So now we have our states one and two and this is just a way again th these are there's no real point to, to doing it like this if you want the lights to, to blink you can tell it to blink <laughs> um, this is just a, an example of work being done so in this we're going to um, if toggle is true it's gonna be in here and we're gonna turn the light on and then we're gonna set a new trigger delay from our random number generator, RNG, 
in the same same values as the other script. Now, this is a little bit, a few more lines than the other two scripts total, I believe. It may, be a, it may actually be just slightly less. Um, and as you can see, it is a little bit more complex, but it's not that complex. Um, and it requires a lot fewer blocks. It requires two blocks instead of three to four. Um, and the setup, there's no, you don't have to set up both timer blocks. Um, you don't have to, you're not going to get confused between having the, the two different programmable blocks. So it's just the one, and that's good. Check it, compiles. So what does it look like when we do it? It should look like before. So that's running, and now it turns off. It's running, triggered, now it turns on. That simple. Um, ah, I don't want that light on, there. <laughs> um, so the, these are uh, basically an introduction to doing work after a desired period of time. We've been using after random numbers, but it doesn't have to be random. You can have it be whatever you want it to be. And you can change that based on uh, the status of different variables or your state. Um, my next video, I'm going to get a bit more in depth with doing a piece of work after a delay. Um, I'm going to dive into um, uh, scheduled actions as well as uh, state machines. Um, if you are if you are a programmer, um, you'll certainly know you'll almost certainly know what a state machine is, uh, and you'll know that they can be anywhere from super complex to super simple, uh, depending on your need and depending on whether somebody else wrote the state machine code for you or not. Um, as far as scheduling actions, um, you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, passing in, like tre treating uh, functions as variables. You can, you can pass a function and then just run a function uh, without knowing what it is uh, when you're actually writing the code. Uh, so those are going to be what we cover in the next video, which shouldn't be too long, maybe a couple days, depending on when I have the time from my day job uh, to do this. but. As always, it's been nice having you. I am Pilot Error 42. Until and until next time, see ya. Oh, and uh, I will have both of these two uh, stations, these two platforms, uh, up on the workshop. I'm not going to post the scripts uh, because that's a pain in the butt, and they're not really useful except in context. Uh, yeah. So see ya. Bye.